Welcome to the Gould's Water Technology video training series. In this episode, we're going to talk to you about a typical installation of an Aquavar AB2 variable frequency drive. Mount the controller in a well-ventilated, shaded area. The controller must be mounted vertically. Be sure to leave 8 inches of free airspace on each side of the unit. The controller must be in an area with an ambient temperature ranging between 34 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not block the heatsink and do not set anything on the unit. The 1151AB2 controller requires a single phase power supply of 115 volts, plus or minus 15%. The 1AB2 and 2AB2 controllers require a single phase power supply of 230 volts, plus or minus 15%. All controllers require a dedicated 20 amp two pole circuit breaker. A dedicated circuit means no other appliances use the same circuit. The output power from the motor controller is three phase, variable frequency, and variable voltage. Maximum output voltage and frequency are line input voltage and 60 Hz, respectively. Low supply voltage will reduce pump performance. It is recommended that for all electrical connections, Metal conduit with metal conduit connectors is used. Do not use wires smaller than 14 AWG. Connect the motor leads for 230 volt or 208 volt operation using the nameplate as a reference. Connect the output power leads from the controller to the three motor leads in the conduit box on the motor. Connect the ground output power lead, or the green wire, to the ground screw in the conduit box on the motor. If the pump has more than 50 feet of wire from the controller, consult the factory for selection of an output load filter or a load reactor. Next, connect the single phase power supply leads and safety ground wire from a 20 amp two pole safety switch, which is in the off position to one side of a 20 amp two pole disconnect switch. Connect the input power lead supplied with the controller to the other side of the disconnect switch. The controller has a high leakage current to ground. The terminals marked GND in the controller must be connected to the safety ground from the electrical service entrance. Failure to properly ground the controller or motor will create an electrical shock hazard. Nuisance tripping will result if you use GFCI protection with this controller. Prior to setting the overload and application switches, ensure the power is off. The motor overload setting switches adjust the level of the motor overload current protection needed to protect the motor from damage due to overcurrent conditions. On the inside of the access cover is the motor overload setting table. This table shows the switch setting for the desired motor overload setting. Read the service factor amps off the motor nameplate. Use the motor overload setting table to match the service factor amps of the motor to the correct switch setting. Set the motor overload switches according to the correct combination on the table. If the service factor amps of the motor do not match any of the motor overload settings, Use the next lowest switch setting. Failure to perform this step will result in loss of motor overload protection and will void the motor warranty. Nuisance motor overload error tripping or motor damage can occur if these switches are not set properly. The controller has six possible application settings. These settings are used to adjust the minimum speed of the motor and the ramp setting or acceleration and deceleration ramp. This allows the controller to fit a wide range of applications. On the inside of the access cover 
is the Application Switch Setting Table. This table shows the switch setting needed for the desired system response. Select a minimum speed of 10 Hz if the pressure at the pump suction is within 20 psi of the desired pressure setting. Select a minimum speed of 30 Hz if the pressure at the pump suction is more than 20 psi below the desired pressure setting or if pumping from a tank or if drawing a suction lift. Changing the ramp setting changes how fast the controller can change the speed of the motor. A slow ramp setting allows the controller to work better in applications where the average demand for water is low, less than 3 gallons per minute, or about one faucet. A fast ramp setting allows the controller to work better in applications where the demand for water is high, because the motor is allowed to change speed faster. The application switches are preset at the factory to 0000, 000, 000 or minimum speed equal to 30 Hz, and ramp setting is equal to fast. When the unit is powered, the application setting switches are at a high voltage potential. Do not touch the application setting switches while the power is on. Turn the breaker or disconnect switch to the on position. The pump will start and pressure will increase to the factory preset 50 psi. After the pressure has stabilized, use the increase or decrease pressure adjust push buttons on the right hand side of the controller to adjust the pressure setting. If the pressure or flow seems low, check the motor rotation direction. Turn the circuit breaker and disconnect switch to the off position and wait five minutes. Switch any two leads on the controller output, terminal one, two, or three. Turn the circuit breaker and disconnect switch to the on position. Observe pressure and flow. If pressure or flow still seems low, check the plumbing. Push and hold the increase or decrease pressure adjust push button until the desired pressure setting is reached. The new pressure setting is automatically saved. Close the faucet and turn power to the controller off. Wait five minutes before installing the controller access cover. The maximum allowable pressure setting is 85 PSI. The controller is always powered. A solid green status code indicates that the pump is in standby mode, the pump is not running, or that the line input voltage is low. Status code indicator light is not a voltage indicator. Always turn off the disconnect switch and circuit breaker and wait five minutes before servicing. A blinking green status code indicates that the pump is running. A blinking or solid red light indicates a problem with the controller. Refer to the access side cover panel or IM for status codes.